you tune in to Turn the Pages, and I'm your host, Jordan Rivers. So last week, I just want to jump right into it because there is so much to discuss. Um, last week, we really didn't get a chance, but there's so much to talk about when we talk about black history. And our guest... She's here for part two, and hopefully we can have a part three, four, and five yes. on Black History. But Lene Lawson, the founder of the Chicago Black Chicago Museum, mm -hmm. so yes. she's here. And yesterday, we yesterday last week we were able to do a little surfing on Black History, uh, talking about the museum, and it really pushed me, motivated me to research on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about first because this is a show about education mm -hmm. and being a village for our children yes. and coming together to support them so that they become successful. Mm -hmm. I definitely wanted to pull up an article that I saw on Facebook and mm -hmm. I said we definitely have to discuss this throughout the show. And so uh, Sassy K has a blog um, that she calls the Sassy Plum. And the article that we are going to kind of intertwine into our conversation on black history is why should uh, why you should teach your child black history at home. Mm -hmm. And just going over the, the major five points, it's breathtaking and it makes you look at yourself in a different light because it pushes you not to just teach your children about black history and where they come from and who they truly are mm -hmm. but it also encourages you know you as an adult to look at who you are who you come from and it's such a motivating um, article we just have to talk about it so one the the first topic is or the first uh, I, I want to say like the number one. She has number one. Mm -hmm. But for me, I just feel like it should, in a sense, be reversed. Uh, she says, too many Americans are totally clueless when it comes to black history. Yes. And I yes. will definitely say I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. I I grew up in the Chicago public system, uh, mm -hmm. school system. So it, it was a good education for what it provided me to do. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to our history... Malcolm, Martin, and Rosa Parks. That's mm -hmm. something that we discussed right. outside. Right. And that's all that I knew. And every year it was Malcolm, Martin, Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that M Martin Luther King Jr. was basically discussed because he was peaceful. He had a peaceful, right. peaceful right. approach. Right. And so as right. I am into adulthood... I guess it was important for us to learn how to be peaceful mm -hmm. in what we want because if we were if we were to realize who our ancestors truly were and that it was more than Malcolm and Martin then we would come to a, an agreement within within each other as black people to actually support one another and make a change in certain systems. Mm -hmm. So I just want to know your take, um, mm -hmm. Lene, mm -hmm. on too many Americans are totally clueless mm -hmm. to the history of black people. Yeah, it's a dark history. It's not a fun thing to learn. It's not pretty. It's not pleasant. Um, it's, it's, it's hurtful. It's like I said, it's dark. It's scary. And people don't want to face it. Blacks included. Um, when I speak to people a lot about the realities that we faced um, in the slave trade, people, it's, it's only so much that they can listen to because it's such a, a, a um, demeaning, um, dehumanizing um, experience that it's hard to face. And it's easy to just walk away from that because that's in the past. We're not, we're not, we're not living that no more. You know, so unfortunately, people, too many people are afraid to face that truth. I've speaking to pe spoken to people who just don't want to watch movies like Roots. You know, another slave movie. Right. We really got to see. Yes, we do. We need to be reminded. And it's unfortunate because... And when I 
hear the story or when I'm teaching the story, I don't see dark. I see empowerment. I see resilience. I see um, stamina. I see encouragement. I see unity. There's Absolutely. so many amazing qualities that is embedded within our history um, even before the slave trade mm -hmm. and the slave trade itself and even after that. I mean, we, we, we rose up. Absolutely. We fought back. We created our own businesses. We united. So, unfortunately, people don't really see that aspect of it, that angle of it. They only see being whipped, being um, demeaned, being talked about, being... Families being torn, torn apart. apart. Right, yeah. And so, that, sh that makes people not want to face it. And so, uh, we become this... The, and then we pass it on to our children. We don't tell them about it. Right. So they have no clue. Right. Who, so you have these generations from. of black people who are lost. And like number one says, we don't know. Absolutely. And you know what? I, I have to throw Beyonce in there because as she has been an artist for so many years, and I believe she's evolving. Mm -hmm. And so she has been dropping some gems just on our gods and goddesses right. and it made me research who I believe you pronounce it Oshun who Oshun is mm -hmm. and so I, I, I'm not going to tell you you know everything about her but basically she she's the goddess of um, peace fertility the the lake that she protects and a few other things and I, I see like this empowerment that right. is along right. with her. So I decided mm -hmm. to do some research on our African gods and goddesses. I and see. unfortunately, mm -hmm. I was not able to find a book mm -hmm. on all of them. Right. So it's just, as far as the bookstores, they only had ancient Egypt. Yeah, and yeah. I know that we come from you know right. all parts of yes. Africa, right. so right. there there's definitely more information out there. Mm -hmm. It's just sad that I cannot get my hands on something so that I can learn about right. what our ancestors believed in and how right. they function, what right. got them through the day. You know, and and it's it's just knowing what your people, your past believed in. Right, it does help you kind of become who you are meant to be right. in, in my opinion personally so kudos to Beyonce yes. for yes. you know as, as people say yes. she's woke now yes. and she's using her artistry as definitely a stage to educate and empower yes. you know her people and especially women and so yes. when we talk about uh, empowerment then it makes me want to go back to hidden figures and how right. those three women they all worked in the same Power. place in NASA yes. but they pushed each other right. they rolled to work together so right. that they would all have a safe they way to, out to for get each other. they looked yes. out for each yes. other and so Beyonce I feel in certain songs she especially in who runs the world mm -hmm. she talks about that right. we we train our daughters to compete to get a boy. Mm -hmm. But we don't train them to compete against each other for businesses and, right. and just you, to sharpen their intellect and to promote one another. Right. So there right. definitely is is a rising at her that I see and I definitely respect her, especially as an artist, because I believe that every artist has a responsibility yes, to you know too. educate your people, yes. inspire them, and take care of them in some sh you know uh, shape or form. Right. So I'm not saying build all the black people in the world's you know right. music studios right. and and basketball courts. Right. I'm saying inspire us to want to be something better right. than what we are at this moment. And, and, and not just feed us garbage. Exactly. Right. And yeah. Beyonce is definitely doing that. And I know we see on social media, we talked about some complaints that we see where mm -hmm. she's going too deep and we mm -hmm. don't understand. No. She's dropping us jewels right. so that we can learn, so that we can be understand yeah. what she's talking about. And so I love her. Who, who right, doesn't? Right, you know, and if you right. say you don't like her, the beehive will definitely get you. Right. However, <laughs> you know, you, you have to respect what she's doing and recognize that she is making people who would not normally want to pick up a book and do some research, mm -hmm. do some research mm -hmm. to learn about their selves. So we have right. a caller. Yes. Mm -hmm. How can how can I help you? What what question or comment do you have tonight? 
Uh, yes, I just wanted to offer up a few observations. Um, uh, one, I think it, it's wonderful that we focus uh, on young women. Uh, we, we should recognize that as of 2016, there are almost three times as many African-American women in colleges as there are young, young African-American men. Absolutely. Um, so it, it does, there does seem to be this asymmetrical relationship going on. Girls are actually doing much better than boys are doing in terms mm. of the African-American community. Secondly, it's wonderful that we, uh, when we find uh, young people who are talented in athletics, music, and have a gift, but at the same time, we should always offer up a realistic outlook, letting them know that there was some young man who was the best basketball player in his city. So right. he thought he was going to end up in the NBA today. He's pushing a broom at a McDonald's if he's lucky. We need to let them have an idea about realistic outlooks. If you want to be an accountant, a million people will be uh, hired as accountants this year uh, around tax season. If you want to play in the NBA, that's a million to one shot in, in this world. Uh, you're competing against people from all over the world to play in, in a very select league. So, again, wonderful if you have talent, wonderful if you can sing or act, plenty of these things. But a realistic fallback that says, you know what, I can do this, I can be an engineer, I can be a doctor, I can right. any number of things that don't place all the chips in this one basket that's extremely rare. This is like buying a lottery ticket, quite frankly. Oh, I, I totally agree. Yeah, you yeah, know, and, and we as a people, we don't, I don't want to say we don't respect certain um, professions because we do. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we just don't see it enough to say, oh, I could really be that. And right. so, you know, everyone sees our artists. And thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate yeah. you. I think the exposure, too, is unfortunately, I mean, as a teacher, I feel that we can ex we can do better at exposing our children to more uh, to more of a variety of professions. Um, for example, we hone in a lot on math and reading, which is awesome, but that takes away from technology, from science, yes. from mm -hmm. art, from music. You know, these are all have professions within them as well too. So Absolutely. you know, they have to be exposed to. Mm -hmm the idea of an engineer, you know, the Absolutely. idea of a computer technician. They have to be exposed to that at young ages, they I do. think. And, and to know that they're out there. Right. And sometimes I really believe people don't know their choices or, right. or right. you know, as yeah. or options as an adult. Like, right. oh, I could be this or I could be that. Right. Um, I'd, I had the opportunity of going to two high schools, and they were night and day. Mm -hmm. One high school taught me, you know, my options. Mm -hmm. One just taught me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's, right. it's definitely a difference. So, I mean, um, when I look at myself now, I wish that I had been exposed more to history. I would have been a historian. You know, but I didn't get that. I didn't. I didn't receive that education in elementary school or high school, um, and not so much college either. To even know that that is something that I would want to do. Yeah, and and so, that's exactly how I feel. Like, oh my gosh, you know, I could have done this right. had this been right. in my face or right. this this, and it's. We sometimes just do not know. Yeah. And, and yeah. until we get to a point in life where we are figuring some things out, you know, right. me, it's never too late to make certain changes right. and, and right. movements. That's what it's I, just that's like, like, oh, Chicago Museum. have we right. learned this right. a long time ago? I right. would probably be here, here. instead yeah. of back here. Right. Right. So, um, yeah. so number two that Sassy talked about was black history is not always taught in school. So this we do know mm -hmm. and we do agree mm -hmm. it's not being taught you know in schools right. or a lot no, of times but you done a little research about a law yes there is a law house bill illinois house bill 2859 mandates that all chicago public schools should um embed black history starting from the transatlantic slave trade in their curriculum it should be embedded in reading it should be embedded in math it should be mm -hmm. embedded in science and of course social science all class art every class should have a component of black history in each lesson okay we have another caller hello thank you for calling in to turn the pages do you have a question or comment for me i should i have a comment you know, some people aren't just people that want to go to college. Can you repeat that? The, the next, hold on, the next best thing, the next best thing would be go to a trade school. I became an iron worker, and all of the professors you just mentioned, I, I either made more than they did or the same amount as they did. 
I worked a little harder, but that's what I wanted to do in life. So some of us just, just aren't cut out to be, even in the profession. Give me, give me a hammer, you know, in a nail, and I can do right. most anything with it. And I made a great, great living. Right. I agree. Trades are awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'm not saying college is the only route. Absolutely right. not. I'm just no. saying people have to be exposed to all the opportunities that are out there. And having a trade is amazing. I definitely agree with you. Yeah. Electricians. All of it. Right. And so we maybe we need to get a principal in here right. and talk about how we can expose uh, a lot of different options for our children right. at, at an earlier age, age yeah. and at a quicker rate right. than what you know what they're used to being right. exposed to. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for calling in and I yeah. hope you continue to watch the show. So um, I do want to read something that Sassy wrote. Which she uh, she basically talks about her being in seventh grade and they opened up their history book and um, she says it went on to paint a mild and refreshing perspective that spoke to how happy slaves were and how mm -hmm. much they enjoyed their duties on the plantation. Yeah. So even when we are being educated, <laughs> lied to there's it. misleading <laughs> right, there. Right. So, yeah. you know, it, it's being honest about our history. Yeah. Uh, it's very important because you don't want to go into culture shock as you right. become an adult. Right. And so I hear about so many people coming from different school systems, from Catholic to private to mm -hmm. public, and they didn't know that they, you know, history is slaves or even, right. you know, queens and kings. Right. And so when right. you know more about where you come That's from, right. you definitely you do better and have a better right. approach with life mm -hmm. you, you you constantly say I know where I came from right. it's no different from just me being an a, a children's author mm -hmm. it's I looked at the people around me as examples so right. for example I know I'm from Chicago so mm -hmm. I look at Jennifer Hudson I mm -hmm. look at Common I look at Kanye I look at Chance I look at all of these Chicago artists and I said they look like me if right. they can do this then so I can, can do that's it right. and it pushes me and so that's what you that's one main reason why you have to teach your children their history, right. where they come from, so that they can do better. Right. And if you don't know your history, then learn together. Right. You know, it, as a parent, you should right. never be yeah. afraid to say, I don't know something. Right. Because as people, we have to we have to learn yeah. when 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 to learn. Right. And there's right. always a day where we right. can learn from each other and it's it's nothing to be shameful about. Right. I, I was just telling yeah, Lene today, you motivated me to, you mm -hmm. know, learn more and mm -hmm. now I'm talking to my family, the elders in my family, right. and they're, you know, uh, telling me about their history. So we That's have another awesome. caller. Hi, thank you for calling um, into t Turn the Pages. Do you have a question or comment? I guess I just wanted to comment on what a previous caller had noted, and, and I agree that certainly um, a college is not for everyone, but by no means should we uh, disregard the notion of about teaching basics in terms of civics, history, philosophy, government. These things are not something that are simply for those who are college bound. The rest of your life, you are going to be a voter in America if you mm -hmm. participate in that process. We don't just allow college-educated people to vote. Everyone votes. Right. And Absolutely tells us exactly what happens when not enough people are informed or educated. Right. So, yes, it's wonderful you want to be an electrician. You should need to study civics if you plan to be a voter in America. Right. Absolutely. It's not about getting a job. It's about creating a holistic person that right. can function in society, all elements of society, not just making a, a, a paycheck. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank you so much yeah. for calling in and putting that, that, that input. That's very important. Mm -hmm. I hope you tune in um, next week especially. Uh, or the week after, but that is very important. Yeah, yeah. I I believe you know you we have talk to be about in everything exactly, yes, yes. and we talk about history. Mm -hmm. But when we we get out, you know, we talk about the Constitution, and that's something that's crammed you know down yes, our throats from yes. from sixth, seventh, eighth, right. and all throughout high, high school. school. Right. But then there are no classes that teaches us about your aldermen, about right. your senator, right. about your state rep, right. and it's all of lost. these people. You know, yeah. it's it's they put everything on the president, the mm -hmm. president.
president, the president. Mm -hmm. Well, we have lawmakers right here in our city that, can that, that are close to us where we can actually connect to them to help us make a difference. Right. And so when, when you're teaching, you know, about history, right. that's why it has to be accurate and it should yes. be taught to yeah. every one of us and not just, you know, a specific race. We all need to learn about each other and where right. we come from right. so that we continue to have a respect as, uh, and respect our cultures. Mm -hmm. And so that's very important. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes, so um, we'll, we'll go into um, Sassy K's third rule or her top, you know, five is inclusion is learned in the home. Mm -hmm. So she's, she explains and expresses that children typically don't see color until the age of five. Mm -hmm. And that's when you, as you get older afterwards, you start realizing, you know, this kid is white. They're getting mm -hmm. special treatment, or this, or or that's how kids view it because they are kids, and so the topic of racism mm -hmm. should definitely be discussed because it does affect that's our why, everyday life. Right. And as that's why you, you see what we're going early. through right now, right. Right. it hasn't gone anywhere. Right. You know, right. it's it's only getting magnified because right. of cell phones and all this technology mm -hmm. where people are smart and they are recording, you know, their conversations mm -hmm. and and whatever happenings with police officers right. and you know it's, it's nothing has changed nothing. it's, it's yeah. just being televised right. and, and right. I think Will Smith said it best mm -hmm. so we have to teach our children so they don't go into shock and think right. that oh you know we're just skipping and this is a Disney movie right. and we're living <laughs> here blind exactly you know? they, they can stand rooted and grounded in who they are I mean I see students at my school who are um, just you know they, they have this image of who they think they want to look like and it's not where they come from and you can tell it's not his their history is not being taught to them at home i mean they have you know long straight hair and mm -hmm. um you know in their conversation it just shows a lack of self-esteem i won't go into the details but it just shows you that that age group can be exposed to their culture and it will create a totally different person an amazing confident resilient individual as mm -hmm. they grow older if they know where they come from Absolutely. you know like I think number I don't want to jump ahead but I think number um the last one um number four or five the says that your, the your, your child will cha be able to challenge the system you know that's that that that's a leader you know, yes. <laughs> that, that, that's what you want to create, you know, in children who can speak up for themselves. You know, imagine what they'll be like as an adult, have to start in their own businesses. Absolutely. You know, which can, which can ultimately change their communities. Exactly. And, and let's so it's just a domino effect, you know, but we got to instill it in them when they are little, when Absolutely. they're young. Absolutely. We have another caller. Thank you for tuning in to Turn the Pages. Do you have a question or comment for me? Yes, I just wanted to know, how are you able to educate parents, especially the younger parents, that don't have enough history about their own to be able to help them with their own younger kids? Because you see generation after generation, if they're not being taught, then the other people, then their kids are not being taught, et cetera. Great question. Yes. I would say definitely share with them some books. Um, they, there's a wealth of children's books on African American history. I mean, Google any person, you you will find an African American children's book on that individual. And nowadays, there's so many movies that are telling yes. our story. I mean, the Jesse Owens movie, the the movie that just came out. Um, you have roots, hidden roots, figures. Hidden figures. Um, there is so much information about our history in those movies. Um, and there are also many organizations that focus on African American mm -hmm. history at the DuSable Museum, the Black Chicago History Forum. Um, that don't you forget can, about the public library. Right, right. And the public library who, who expose us to um, so much history. So it's just about giving them the resources. Yes. So, uh, so basically, we're wrapping up with uh, challenge the system. Knowing your history will help you and your family 
uh, be strong enough and bold enough to challenge the system to make this world a and better place, a to difference. make it great again, yes. for real this time. Right. Um, right. And then it will teach your child to be a leader and to speak up. Yes. So yes. I just want to, you know, thank Lene Lawson for coming thank in and being a guest. for having And me. to just it, sum it up some, uh, everyone here that you watch on Can TV, they are leaders. Yes. They know where they come from. Yes. They have a voice. They respect themselves. And I definitely appreciate Can TV here for allowing us to be leaders. Yes. So if you um, have any questions, just go right to www.turnthepages.org. Um, I'm trying to talk really, really fast. Um, have any questions and you would like to participate and be on a show, definitely send out an email. So thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Jordan Rivers, and you're watching Turn the Pages. See you next week.